So today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the iPhone and the camera capabilities of this thing. It's complicated, but in short, I never thought I'd say this, but the camera is not good. And we really need to talk about it. Let's do this. Hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Tom. I'm a huge fan of cameras in general and the idea of new cameras being released just super excites me. For the last couple of years, I've been using an iPhone, not this one in particular. I've had all sorts of iPhones ever since the iPhone 4 and they just keep getting better and better, but I haven't like let go of Android devices. I've been also been using Android devices and you know, it's, it's amazing how far both of these cameras have gotten. You know, like for example, this is the Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro. This can shoot 108 megapixel photos. It can record in 8K, which is just amazing if you really think about it. A lot of it is a bit of a gimmick. I'm gonna make a separate video on that, but it's not all that great. But what I really wanted to talk about is the iPhone and the image quality that comes out of this thing. There are several levels of this issue at hand. Number one being, I think that Apple pretty much delivers what people want. They want a simple camera in their pocket and it might as well just be the smartphone. And if it's like really bright outside, it's sunny and everything, then, and when you're taking photos and videos, it just looks really amazing. Sometimes it even looks so good that I prefer the images that come out of the iPhone compared with my mirrorless camera, which is weird if you really think about it. This camera that I'm recording with, this is a full frame Sony camera, and I still prefer this tiny, tiny sensor on a bright day. And why is that? Well, because of the small size of the sensor on the iPhone, Apple has to use a lot of trickery. It has to use this AI algorithm stuff just to analyze the image and improve it, like intensely improve it. I would say basically that what makes the iPhone pictures look great is that they're being Photoshopped. But the problem with that is that the images themselves aren't really that good. The good thing about an iPhone is that you can turn off a lot of these functions and you can sort of keep it very simple and decide for yourself that you don't want the iPhone to create these spectacular images. Like for example, I like to take night photos and with the new night mode on the latest iPhones, when you take a picture outside, when it's like really dark outside, you can see stars and all sorts of things, but it doesn't really look like night, you know, because it enhances the image so much that it almost looks like daylight and it doesn't look natural, you know? And so personally, what I prefer is to use the Sony ZV-1, which is a very small and compact camera. The images and the videos, they don't pop as much as on the iPhone, but you can edit them, you can tweak them, you can make them into whatever you want. But it's more than that. They sort of look more natural, more real. And it feels like the iPhone, it sort of interprets what it sees and improves upon it. And that's where I have a problem with iPhones in general. Like, it looks amazing. We all see the presentations every September or October, and we go like, ah, oh, I need to get my hands on that. The images look amazing. That looks just like a professional camera. They even put the pro name on this camera phone and you think that if I get that, I can take just as good pictures as my mirrorless camera. But the simple truth is that the result is never as good because the photos that you take here are just not real. Now, Marquez Brownlee, also known as NKBHD, he did a fantastic video on this topic about computational photography and how smartphones really don't take the best photos, technically speaking, but they improve upon it so much that you're very pleased. And this is to please most people with smartphones. They want to take simple snapshots and they just want everything to look perfect. But for professionals like you and me, it's just not good enough. Now, I'm not just bashing the iPhone 
I'm also talking about the Android side of things. Now, I'll take this as a good example, but you can pretty much take Huawei or Samsung or OnePlus, amazing cameras on those smartphones as well. Sometimes the sensor is a lot bigger on the Android device than it is on the iPhone. And sometimes you can, of course, get really amazing videos and photos, like 108 megapixel photos. I've done comparisons and I can definitely tell you that yes, you get more details and more sharpness on a bright day taking a 108 megapixel photo on this smartphone than you can on my 24 megapixel full frame camera. There's no discussion about that. But as soon as the light is just a bit weaker, then the images coming out of this thing are not very good. And it goes for both of these devices. Like low light capabilities are fantastic. They're just getting better and better. Like Apple and Samsung and all the other smartphone manufacturers, they're really listening and they know what people want. They want to take better night photos. Unfortunately, the laws of physics prevent these machines from taking good photos and videos at night. So what do they do? They enhance the results using very advanced algorithms. And for most part, it looks impressive, but I would still argue that it's not good enough. Now, in the future, I am certain that it's just gonna look better and better and better. There is this theory about diminishing results. And is this the case with smartphones? Will we reach a point where it doesn't get really that much better? I think that with technology, with software, it's still go just gonna keep on improving and improving until we finally can't see the difference between the footage coming out of these things and professional cameras. But for the time being, I have to be honest, I just don't think looks good enough. Now I'm rocking the iPhone 12 Pro. There is a bigger sensor on the iPhone 13 Pro. And from what I understand, watching reviews and, you know, observing samples and comparisons, it looks a lot better. But I just know that if I got the iPhone 13 Pro, it would look amazing for a couple of weeks. And then I come to the same conclusion as I did on the iPhone 12 Pro, that it's impressive, it's very cool, but it's just not good as a real camera. And you know, I just wanted to add that there is a bit of a minimalist inside of me that is sort of tired of chasing, you know, newer smartphones and newer cameras to get better and better image quality, because what is good image quality anyway? It's really all about the content, you know? And also, if you have like a really amazing photographer or a talented person who can take amazing cinematic videos, it doesn't really matter what camera you give that person, they will do the best they can with the tools present. So I'm certain if you take like the top 10 photographers of the world and hand them an old iPhone 3GS, you know, and let them take snapshots with those, they would probably make amazing photos that beat any photos that we take with the newer smartphones, right? But that's the thing though. There is still this idea of having a perfect camera in your pocket. Now, I do like what Sony is doing to start creating these pocket friendly cameras. Like we're sort of going back to that, to the pocket cameras. And I really like that. I like the RX series, the ZV-1, which, you know, I made a couple of videos on. It's a great, fantastic pocket camera. And the results are pretty close to the Sony full frame camera. So I'm very pleased with the Sony ZV-1. It feels like I've said it a couple of times, but when it comes to the iPhone and when it comes to Android smartphones, I just don't think we're there yet. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you wanna see more videos like this, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videos. Take care.